The debt ceiling hangs over federal employees as an unprecedented default could come as soon as the first week in June. Negotiations remain ongoing as President Joe Biden attends the G7 as President Joe Biden attends the G7 summit in Japan this weekend, but Speaker Kevin McCarthy said that the two sides are still far apart. But both sides have remained optimistic that a deal will get done before a default. Eric Katz is a reporter here at GovExec. He joins me now to talk about the debt ceiling negotiations and how they continue to affect federal employees. Welcome back to the show. Uh, good to be here once again, uh, talking debt ceiling. We're going to be talking about it a lot, and I'm sorry to keep tapping you, but uh, you are our ace reporter on this. As I said, the, the deadline is approaching. What happened this week with ne the negotiations? So this week, uh, the president convened another meeting at the White House with uh, congressional leaders in the House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans. And, you know, that... Uh, that was meeting with the, this is the second meeting they've had in the last two weeks. There was initially going to be one on Friday, uh, last Friday, not, not uh, today as, as you're listening to this, but that got delayed. Uh, perhaps that was because um, some of the deputies that were negotiating made some progress uh, and they wanted to let that breathe a little bit. Um, so they met this week and uh, like you said, uh, Speaker McCarthy said, we're still far apart. Um, but there was some sort of more laying out of, of what both sides are willing to, to accept or not accept. Um, and, uh, you know, things have progressed in that sense. And also, uh, they they sort of laid a more firm, uh, path, uh, the groundwork, uh, for, uh, these discussions to continue as they are, as they have throughout the week. Uh, by by designating certain officials um, to to uh, conduct those talks, um, and we can get into to who that is. But that um, Speaker McCarthy said um, the fact that we have that um, is is it creates a structure for the for the talks to go on, and uh, that in and of itself is a positive development. Um, you know, there's still some bickering over exactly what they're negotiating over, um, you know, obviously Republicans are saying we don't want to raise the debt ceiling unless there's uh, cuts to federal spending attached to it. And the Democrats are saying, well, no, we're just having a, a, a discussion over the budget and the debt ceiling issue is separate. Um, clearly they are linked in some way. And uh, uh, that's sort of how the discussions are proceeding. You just alluded to it. The negotiating circle has shrunk quite a bit. Our listeners will know Shalanda Young, the OMB uh, chief. What's her role? What are the roles of the other people that are now more hands in the dirt here on these negotiations? Yeah, I, I think you know you sort of uh, you said it. The, their role is to get down into the nitty gritty and really uh, figure this thing out. Um, you know, each side has made sort of broad demands, and now it's time to to work through those and and see where there could be some bipartisanship. Um, uh, minority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, is is out of the picture. Um, honestly, Chuck Schumer uh, in the Senate and and a House Minority Leader uh, Hakeem Jeffries are are not directly involved. This is the White House. And uh, the speaker, Speaker McCarthy, and his team. So, like you said, OMB Director Shalanda Young uh, and Counselor to the President Steve Ruschetti are, are leading that charge. Um, they know the ins and outs of sort of uh, the budget, where where there might be some some leeway on the president's uh, proposal for FY twenty four, as well as other reforms that. Uh, Republicans are calling for, you know, we can expect some part of this deal will include um, uh, clawbacks of of uh, spending that was approved for COVID relief. Um, there's talks of um, changing the 
requirements for getting receiving certain benefits from federal programs. Um, you know, think about uh, w what sort of work requirements people need in order to receive um, uh, federal federal assistance programs. Um, so that's all part of it. And, uh, you know, they're representing the White House there. Shalanda Young, originally uh, from Louisiana. Uh, McCarthy has tapped Representative Graves, who's also from Louisiana. There's been already some reports coming out about how that dynamic has sort of helped. Uh, you know, they have sort of a friendly relationship. Um, so, you know, the, the, sometimes this can come down to personalities. And, uh, you know, we saw that in... I think it was 2019 when we were in a, a debt ceiling situation and like this one and uh, Pelosi and Trump were getting nowhere. His, 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 you know, Oval Office staff, uh, you know, his West Wing staff were getting nowhere. And so he tapped Steve Mnuchin and that sort of led to a breakthrough of sorts because, you know, the personalities, I guess, uh, were able to, to come together and, and make, reach a deal. Um, that's sort of what they're hoping for here, Shalanda Young and and, and Rochetti, uh, working with uh, McCarthy's staff and some of his deputies who are, you know, House members, are hoping they can come together and, uh, you know, iron something out in in the uh, in the very near future. Has the timeline changed? I mean, you say the ne very near future, Yellen has said uh, June 1st, I know we had Patrick Orley on an economist earlier in the week, and he intimated essentially that Yellen is just kind of giving that early date to really push the conversation a little bit more quickly. It's pretty much unknown, but we get an idea. What What is that idea? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the big, big question, uh, or one of the big, big questions, I guess, is... Uh, uh, you know, can they reach a deal? And then how long do they have to do it? Um, so McCarthy has signaled we need a deal by the end of this week, basically within the next few hours of, of when this uh, uh, podcast is is um, being delivered to your ears. Um, uh, so I, I don't know how realistic that is, but he's talking about sort of the timeline to get it through the House and then turn it over to the Senate and have, you know, they go through their process and get it to the president's desk. Um, so, you know, that that's, doesn't happen uh, overnight. It takes takes a few days, um, potentially, you know, a week or two. Uh, if that's the real deadline, you know, like you said, it could, it's, it's unknown. Um, you know, I've seen some briefings from uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center, which is a think tank that tracks this stuff. They sort of lay out exactly what federal expenditures go out on which days. For example, for many of our listeners, uh, in the, that first week of June, there's like $6 billion of federal salary payments that go out. Um, that's a sort of toward the end of the week. Uh, you know, there's, there's Social Security payments that have to go out, Medicare. Um these things, you know, are bringing us closer to that point when we no longer have enough cash that we can actually make those payments. So once that tips over the scale, that's when you uh, breach the debt limit. And, you know, if you can't pay, make all your payments, then you have a default. So that's what we're looking for. That's sort of, uh, that's um, what the countdown is. And exactly when that's going to happen can change, but, um, you know, it's all based on how much revenue is coming in and versus how much is going out. And, you know, there's some reports and bipartisan policy, policy centers talked about this. Yellen talked about this, uh, you know, the revenues maybe weren't as much as we thought. And then there's like uh, payments related to uh, uh, student debt cancellation and all of that sort of impacts this. So it could end up being sort of in that early June timeframe. Uh, the the later the latest estimate that we have is early August. So it could stretch out that far. Um, but obviously you can't wait to pass legislation hoping that uh, it, uh, that will happen. Or I guess you can, but you are significantly increasing the risk of a default. Uh, so you have to be prepared to, to pass something on the early end uh, of that timeline. Yeah, it's really dancing with danger, I think, if you're trying to 
push it out and out and out because as you mentioned we don't really know when it comes to the revenue and and what that exactly uh is because this is not entirely concrete by by any uh stretch has there been any change in the way that agencies are preparing for this is there any clarity on how things uh will affect feds like you said government's got to make the, the federal government has to make decisions as to who to pay if they can't pay everybody are feds going to be the first on the chopping block and get some ious or furloughs or do we know what's going to happen no, we don't know for sure. Uh, what we suspect, and this is sort of based on what officials have said and what outside experts have said is, is feasible, is that um, the U.S. won't make any payments until it can make all of its payments in a given day. So rather than say, okay, we can only make 75% of our payments today, we'll choose you, you, and you, but not you, they'll just say no one's getting paid uh, until we uh, have enough cash reserves built back up. Um, so uh, that would, you know, leave everyone in a bad place who receives federal payments, states, uh, beneficiaries, grantees, uh, potentially federal employees. Um, you know, we haven't seen an exact uh, um, layout of what that would look like. We haven't um, seen any sort of formal announcement that agencies are preparing for for that eventuality, um, I think you know it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be like a shutdown where feds are sent home. Uh, more likely, it would be that they're told to keep working and their paychecks will come later. There's been lawsuits over this and shutdowns past, and you know the government may end up having to pay you know, back paid over time uh, for that sort of uh, thing, um, uh, which, which uh, you know, would be dealt with later on. Um, you know, there's no expectation that federal employees wouldn't be made whole. In fact, they would be legally obligated to be made whole, um, as far as I know. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it could really disrupt uh, the way that, um, uh, you know that that federal employees are are paid, and I, I know that that's been discussed uh, on the on the podcast with some of uh, the experts that that you've had on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I I would I would definitely uh, not be feeling very comfortable about what would happen to me were I a federal employee and there's a, a default on the on uh, on our debt. Best prediction. Do you think this is going to get done? So let's let's think about uh, where we are right now. Um, as of Thursday afternoon, when this podcast is being recorded, there's starting to be the very beginning signs of, uh, and I don't want to say optimism. That's almost too powerful of a word, but starting to be some movement toward understanding that they're making some degree of progress and i'm used to catching this as much as i possibly can um <clears throat> yeah they're making a plan to make a plan basically something like that yeah you know mccarthy talked about you know if there was a deal we could vote on it next week um so you know there there's i i assume lots to iron out still but maybe there's a little bit of a framework emerging where they're they're sort of saying, okay, this can be a part of it, you know, what's the details, um, you know, but there's a lot to work out. How long are they going to, uh, how much are they going to raise the debt ceiling by, or for how long will they suspend it? Uh, I believe the House passed bill only went to March, you know, that's like uh, less than a year. I, I can't imagine that the White House is going to agree to any concessions to raise the debt ceiling uh, only to so we have to deal with this again before the election. Uh, that would just it would be uh, an unnecessary headache for for them. So I imagine you know they're going to want a couple of years on this <clears throat> if they're going to agree to lower spending levels and uh, other other sort of uh, 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 considerations that that Republicans want. Um, so that has to be resolved. 
um, you know, what are how long if if there's a budget deal that places spending caps, is that just for FY24? Is that for FY24 and 25? You know, we've seen many of these two-year deals in the past. In 2011, that it was a 10-year thing. So uh, I suppose that's on the table, although I imagine there's less appetite for that. Uh, um, you know, what and then the 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 sort of auxiliary parts of this, like um reforms to entitlement programs and uh, um, you know how much of that COVID money gets clawed back, how that's counted towards spending reductions. Um, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. So that's why they, it's, it's a tough deal um, to, to sort out. Uh, you know, it's funny that um, Kevin McCarthy said uh, something along the lines of, you know, once we actually sit down, this is pretty easy. Everyone knows what the deal is going to look like, so we can hash it out pretty quickly. It was a matter of of getting everyone to sit down, which is obviously um, sort of a negotiating tactic on his part. And he wants to say, if there's a default, it's Democrats' fault, it's Biden's fault because they they refuse to negotiate for months. Um, you know, the flip side of that, of course, is. House Republicans refuse to pass a clean debt ceiling for months, and that's why we're in this predicament in the first place. Um, so, you know, if everyone is is sort of sticking to their talking points publicly, even though behind the scenes their things are happening. They're moving and shaking. Meetings are happening. I believe I believe the White House team was on the Hill today uh, on Thursday. Um, so, uh, I, I guess in, I haven't answered your question yet. Um, you know, it seems like maybe things are moving toward uh, uh, some sort of resolution here. So I guess if I had to bet, that's where I would be leaning. But, um, you know, it's it's still difficult to see, you know, exactly how this shakes out. So uh, nothing would surprise me, um, including an extension to buy themselves time if they're running low on time and they think the deadline's coming. If they say, let's just suspend, suspend the, the debt ceiling until July 1st. Um, you know, I think we saw, we've seen that sort of thing in the past, uh, just to buy time on negotiations. Um, so that's in the cards. They haven't discussed that yet. So I'm not saying that's looking likely, but it's just something that they could do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all sort of in play at this point. It's not the same actors necessarily. So I don't want to say that it's a repeat, but I will simply say that this reminds me somewhat of budget negotiations and CRs and the short of short sort of short term deals. So I would, I would put my money where I a betting man, and I swore off gambling a few years ago. I would put my money on the scenario you just uh, put forward that this is a buy us some more time for this, and we're going to keep on this carousel at least for a few more months because that's. Uh, if nothing else, uh, you know, a path to get more of what you want and, and something of a of a pattern uh, of Congress on on budget related issues. Yeah. And and um, while we're on that point, um, if they do somehow miraculously pull a, a deal out of their hats, um, you know, that could actually lessen the headache uh, if if for the regular appropriations process, because. If they have a, um, you know, so many times in the past, the 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 delay was over what that top line spending level is going to be. So if this debt ceiling deal includes an agreement on that top line level, then they only have to write the bills, <laughs> which is obviously extremely difficult and time consuming and uh, not and, and, and politically charged. Uh, thing to do but it's uh they're like a lot closer than normal so you know maybe we could avoid some of those shutdown uh sort of um drop that sh sort of shutdown drama that we often see uh you know that there's two new leaders in the senate appropriations which is where those things are usually uh uh, uh negotiated um which is uh, uh patty murray and susan collins and they've uh They've they've agreed they or they keep talking about we want to do this by by regular order and uh, without delay um, and actually bring separate appropriations bills to the floor rather than just one big omnibus 
you know, a lot of people have talked to that game before, but they uh, seem very committed to it. Um, and uh, if they have that top line number, it makes it a real, a more realistic process, uh, uh, prospect. Here's hoping that something gets uh, done before the financial world spirals even further out of uh, control than it would be otherwise. I don't uh, claim to be a, a knower of finance, but this has me, uh, I would say, uncharacteristically worried about it. And uh, Eric, we will certainly have you on uh, before the deadline. So I apologize for making you work overtime on this stuff, but uh, you have been... Uh, a great uh, source of knowledge and analysis on this. And as such, thanks for being on the show with us. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, uh, hopefully next time I'm on, we'll be discussing what a great deal they've come up with. Yes, the best deal, the best possible deal in the world.